Spooky stories. Here we go. Go into your bed. Cover yourself with a blanket and start being afraid. Today, I will tell you a horror story. One that you have never heard. The story is about how one boy was transferred to a new school. The old school was good, but it was closed for repairs. Seriyasa was transferred to another school. And so, he went there for the first time. He walked and kept thinking, what is this other school like? Probably everything is different. That's scary. He imagined a rotting ceiling, loose doors, an unneeded coffin lying behind a broken wall, a bunch of bones all over, and a skeleton climbing out of the windows to visit you. But it was useless. Although scary, having no school education is even scarier. But if it's a different school, then the teachers are also different, and not like human beings. In one hand, they have a textbook, and the other, a crocodile skin belt. Just seeing this belt once, you start feeling the tears well up in your eyes. In class, these strange children will learn something completely different. Not about nature all over the world, but something very, very difficult, something incredibly disgusting. For example, things they're fed in the cafeteria. If you could not count in class how many legs a nasty, hairy caterpillar has, you immediately get a bad grade. Right, I'm in a two. No, a two minus. And a two minus is just as bad as failing. Physical education, as this other school, is an exercise but terrible fights in their ring without rules, and boxing with high school students. If you lose, but by some miracle you remain in one piece, you will be on duty at school. Not only all day, but all night. You have to walk through the night in an empty school and scare away the rats. So they don't get into the biology room, and fret to the skeleton in the closet. If you survive till morning and your mother comes for you, it will be a completely different mother and unfamiliar. She will grab your hand and take you home, but it will be a completely different house. Here, Serios even cried out in terror. He looked around and saw the kids in the classroom, and the teacher said, my dear children, this is our new student. He was transferred from another school. But then suddenly, everyone started screaming, and they all ran away from him. Seriosa was surprised. What's the matter with you guys? Then one girl leaned out from under her desk and asked, Does your bite hurt? No, answered Seriosa. I don't bite at all. What am I, crazy? But tell us, what kind of monster is in your bag? Well, I have my textbooks. There's no monster in here. Listen, maybe you have some kind of disease. And bam, the whole class might catch it. And why would I be sick, bite, and have monsters in my bag? You aren't from here. The children say that you're from another school. Seriosa burst into laughter and finally realized that there really aren't any different schools. All schools are the same. And in other
other normal schools, teachers teach normal children. So you shouldn't be afraid of anyone. They have skeletons in the closet at every school, in the anatomy class. But that's a story for another day. <laughs> loves to tell amazing spooky stories. And I'm one of them. But all these stories are, how can I say, amazingly fake. But today I will tell you a horrible, spooky true story. This is about a boy who was so afraid to be so little. So here it goes. Once upon a time, in a kingdom 139 lands away, with a tiny little prince. No, here I'm telling another fairy tale. This time I want to tell a real true story. In an ordinary building at an ordinary apartment, number 139, lived a little boy who was afraid because he was so little. If he was a big boy, he would not be afraid of anything. Because big boys are men already, and men are never afraid of anything. Well, of women, maybe. When you are so little, everything around you looks really big and scary. For example, the boy was really afraid that his mommy would put him in the bathtub and forget to turn off the water. The water would rise and rise until it turned into a gigantic ocean. The waves were raging and breaking into a storm. The boy was swimming, but he couldn't get out of the tub. He would finally end up at a deserted island somewhere. He would scream and shout to passing ships would see him. But he was so small that not even a telescope could find him. And unfortunately, captains don't have microscopes. The boy was also afraid of going out for a walk and in a moment of destruction, he stepped in a black and gooey tar. And unfortunately, everyone knows that tar is the number one enemy of little boys. If you are already big, you could just pull your foot out and keep going. But little boys aren't strong enough to step out or getting out of their shoes, because moms tie the shoelaces really tight. What if a roller truck comes? He was also afraid of riding the elevator alone, because he couldn't reach the button to his floor. He could only reach the second floor. Then he would have to take the stairs. The stairs are big and long, and he lives at the top floor. It would take him the longest time to get there. Maybe a whole year. By the time he gets home, he would be an old man. And what if he gets sick with a sore throat? And the only thing that could soothe it was strawberry jam. He would go to the kitchen and would try to open the refrigerator door. But it is just so big and heavy that he would need to sit on the floor and wait. He would probably die before getting the most needed strawberry jam. Or something even worse. He would finally get it open, but the jam jar would fall on top of him. The scariest thing of all is that when you're small, your parents would never get you an adult bike. Just imagine something else, having to ride with your tricycle until you get married. Overall, it was very scary to be a little boy. Up to that moment, when he saw a small kitten on the street. It was extra tiny. A dog was chasing after it, and the kitten climbed up a tree to escape. So the boy got a stick and chased off the dog. He got the kitten and brought it home to live with him. At home, he poured the kitten some milk and put it to bed. Then he realized that being little wasn't that terrible. Especially when you have someone big and caring next to you. Now the kitten has the boy. And the 
who has mommy and daddy. Who praised him when they found out he had saved the kitten. And the boy grew up and became quite big. So, so, so. Where could all of the cartoons be hiding? Hmm. Let's start an investigation. Ah! One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's look for cartoons to pick. I will press this mic. 